have you ever felt so angry at someone you wanted to scream into a pillow? Have you ever felt so anxious before a presentation you couldn't sleep the night before? Or you felt sick to your stomach? I know I did about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I'm sure we can all relate to feeling so upset after a breakup or saddened by the loss of a loved one. Our ability to deal with these big feelings in a way that's socially tolerable is called emotion regulation. And it's essential for our mental health and well-being. Yet, we find ourselves in a mental health crisis. Our healthcare providers are burnt out. Our system is overloaded. Getting treatment can be expensive, not to mention inaccessible to many. And the stigma around mental health can prevent many from getting help. So how can we prevent a crisis from happening? Well, let me take you on a journey. Starting in 2012, I was in the final year of my undergrad degree, finishing up courses, and I was wondering, what comes next? You ever have that thought after finishing a big milestone? Like, what do I do with my life now? I had all these interests, computer science, psychology, medicine, philosophy, but I wasn't quite sure how all those things fit together. One thing I did know, I wanted to help people. So I started volunteering at the Vancouver Crisis Center. And that felt very rewarding. I felt like I could really help people because I was talking to them directly on the phone or through our online chat service. One thing that stood out to me was that a lot of these people didn't have the skills or support to deal with really strong emotions. So there was one call I took. It was a night shift. Around 3 a.m., a young man called in. He was crying. He said he wanted to kill himself. He felt like he was a burden to everyone. He felt like he tried everything and nothing seemed to help him. And at that moment, I realized like he doesn't know what to do. He feels stuck. And our system is failing. We need more supports for mental health. So I started my graduate degree, and I was still continuing to volunteer. The work I was doing was around technology. And it was how to move through and interact in 3D space. It really didn't have anything to do with my volunteer work. Over time, I started to feel like there is this disconnect between my research and my volunteer work. And then I had an epiphany. What I was doing with my research and with technology could apply directly to helping people in crisis. So after two years into my PhD, which was quite a lot of work put in already, I decided to change my topic. I went from doing something that was in the lab to something more applied and something more personally meaningful. I wanted to study how we can design virtual reality experiences to support mental health and well-being. How many of you know what virtual reality is, or ever tried it? Show of hands. I'm seeing quite a bit of hands, that's great. For those of you who don't know, virtual reality, or VR, is this computer-generated environment that places the user in this simulation with 360 visuals, stereo audio, 3D interaction with tracking sensors and controllers. VR is a very visceral experience. It feels real, even though you know it isn't. It's kind of like a very vivid dream. Or, put another way, if a virtual ball came flying at your head, you would duck. 
my partner happens to be a VR games designer. And one of the games he made called Davigo, you're in VR and then some people are on their PC and you put on the VR headset and you're this giant. And you have these big hands, you're lumbering around, really slow movements. You can rip trees out of the ground and try and throwing things at the warrior. It's super fun. But it's also a really embodied experience. You feel like you're really this giant. And I think that's one of the powers of VR. You don't just watch a screen, you feel like you're really in the experience. So going back to my research on emotion regulation. So emotion regulation is a skill like any other. You need to practice. And one of the challenges with practicing is having these emotional situations to practice with in the first place. If you're sitting here and I tell you, think of a really stressful situation. Got it? Now, how would you react emotionally to that? Just thinking about that situation now is quite different from being in it in the moment, right? So we need more realistic experiences to practice emotion regulation skills development. And that's where VR comes in, because we can simulate these experiences that elicit strong emotional reactions so people can practice their emotion responses to that. So one of the studies that we did in our lab, the iSpace lab, was eliciting the strong emotion of awe and wonder. This was an experience designed as a countermeasure to sensory deprivation for astronauts. And the idea was that if they're going to Mars, it's going to be a really long time where they're not seeing anyone, they're not able to travel, they're in a very confined space for a long time. And with that comes kind of depression and anxiety. And I'm sure we can all relate to that. With the COVID-19 restrictions placed on us, having some sort of countermeasure to that social isolation is crucial. Okay, so you put on the virtual reality headset and you find yourself by a fire. You can hear it crackling, crickets in the background. You can almost feel the heat coming off of the flames. As the sun begins to rise and you look around, you see you're in a forest, in the mountains. Birds start chirping, the sun comes out. All seems peaceful. As the day goes by, you're watching the clouds go by. And one of these clouds looks like something. What could it be? Perhaps a deer. The sun begins to set and the stars come out. If you look up, you can see the aurora above you. In front of you, you see something coming towards you, or rather, you're going towards it. It's a planet. This planet happens to be Mars. It's as if you're those astronauts going to Mars. You can see it's kind of barren, a desert. And you make your way back to our home planet, Earth. It begins to rise in front of you. This pale blue dot. 
you can see all the diversity and beauty of our planet and how all the boundaries of our countries start to melt away. And then we're back at the fire. You're left to contemplate what you just experienced. When you take off the headset, our participants told us they felt a deep sense of appreciation and connection to our planet. So what this shows is that we can create virtual reality experiences that elicit strong emotions. And those experiences in virtual reality, they stay with us. They can transfer outside of virtual reality. So with emotion regulation skills development, there's huge potential there. And right now, I'm developing a VR experience for teenagers to practice emotion regulation in stressful situations, like the first day of high school. <laughs> you remember how stressful that was? Really, any new social situation. You're walking down the hallway, people are looking at you, you're wondering if they're judging you. It can be very anxiety-inducing. So the idea is that we can simulate these realistic experiences in VR so that teenagers can practice their emotional reactions to it and they can practice it over and over again and get better at it over time. And they can do it in a place that feels safe in VR, but it feels very real. So this idea of using virtual reality for emotion regulation or any skills development and practicing it over time to get better is seen in other domains, like sports. So I used to be a figure skater. And my coach would always tell me, imagine doing the perfect jump and tell yourself key things to help you do it. This exercise is called mental imagery. So I was like, OK, I'm by the boards, and I'm imagining doing the perfect axle. I have my arms out like this back straight, skating backwards. I'm looking where I want to jump. And I step forward on my outside edge. I swing my arms back and everything up together. Then I transfer my weight over to the other side and spin around. And check out. Perfect axle, right? <laughs> Well, uh, Smith and colleagues did this kind of practice of using mental imagery with gymnasts in a 2007 study and found that it increased performance by 36%. Now, that's just by imagining doing some skill. What would be the impact on emotion regulation skill development by doing it virtually? Now, you might be skeptical of VR because we're constantly glued to our phones and bombarded by media. Isn't technology the problem here? And you might say, well, we already have other practices for emotion regulation. Like, what about mindfulness, biofeedback, hypnosis, yoga? Why are we adding VR to the mix? Well, what virtual reality is really good at is giving intense short bursts ex of experience. So you're not in VR for a long time, and we're not replacing existing practices, but rather amplifying them. So perhaps VR is a shortcut to practices that can take years to master without it. And you might say, well, VR has been around for decades, right? Why, why now? Well, this is VR 10 years ago, only 10 years ago. It was very expensive, it was heavy and cumbersome, and it was really only in research labs and big companies. Mm. 
This is VR now. And it's lightweight. You can go and pick this up today for $400 Canadian. So VR has never been more accessible, nor more affordable. And with that accessibility, we can give people the tools to practice more emotion regulation and lessen the burden on our healthcare system, our healthcare workers, first responders, and crisis center volunteers. I can imagine a world where when that young man who called in, if he had access to more tools to help him deal with his emotions, maybe he wouldn't have needed to call in. So when we think of VR, we might think of the stuff of science fiction. But I'm here to tell you the future is here. And we can use virtual reality in our everyday lives to support our mental health and well-being. But don't take my word for it. Go out. Try it and experience the vast potential this technology has for good. Thank you. <laughs>